live from Chicago, welcome to Monday Night Football. How's it going, everybody? Mike back at you with another edition of 5-Minute Gaming, and I cannot tell you how excited I am about this show. There are so many cool new things happening. We have 4K. We have new surprises with the flipping. We have two guests. I just, I can't say, I've just, I've been giddy all day waiting for this moment. And the moment is here, and I'm ready to reveal that not only do we have David Thiel here to talk about Monday Night Football, we have the other watchman, Norb Kawili, with us. How's it going, Norb? Hey, I'm doing great. I'm excited to be on here because you've been kind of running with the five minute gaming and I've been having a blast watching you do your thing. And I get to be on here with the legendary David Thiel and you, I feel like, you know, special guest of honor. So you know, I'm glad to be here. This is awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking time to join us when David and I discussed doing Monday Night Football, which I know is a very, very special game to him. You're a football guy, and I thought, man, if you would join the show, it's going to be that much better than it would have been if it was just me. So I appreciate you being here to help out, and I think all the viewers out there are going to be excited as I am. So here we are to talk about Monday Night Football, the pinball machine. And starters, this is from the 80s, and I don't remember the exact year. David, do you know the exact year this came out? 89. 89. Okay. It came out in time for the 89 football season. So they managed to hit that deadline like September, October. And right off the bat, I would just like to bring up the flyer of this game. These flyers are created to advertise the game to operators, which make the decision to buy the game and put it in arcades. So these flyers are a representation of what the internet is now because back then there was no internet and so this was the way the game was sold as these were mailed to operators and right off the bat the big selling point is we've got dan is it D deerdorf am i saying that right mm -hmm. dan yep. dan deerdorf yeah frank gifford and al michaels and uh i know frank gifford and al michaels pretty well dan deerdorf he's not as familiar to me he was a coach right yeah he was a former player Actually, okay. I, I'm trying to remember which team. For some reason, the St. Louis Cardinals comes to mind, but I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, he was a former player. He might have coached too, but I know he played. Well, David, I know you have a story about these three, and I'm going to put a big uh, picture up there. David, you got to work with these three individuals. I know they came in and recorded voices for the game. And tell us about your experience working with them and I'm anxious to hear the inside scoop. There's a lot of things significant about this. This is really one of the first serious licenses that Pinball had that they could execute faithfully. I mean, back in the day when they still had bells and chimes, they did some rock and roll games like Kiss and The Who, but this is pretty faithful to the some aspects of the Monday Night Football thing. So it was a serious license. So. They arranged for me to communicate with Dan and Frank and Al. And my communication was just a single sheet of paper saying, these are the things we'd like you to say. We need these things. Talk about yardage and hits and color. We wanted them to do color. And ABC arranged for me to send this letter off to these guys. I know I was never in a room with any of them. And this was probably in, in spring or something, right? And so some time passed and then I got a cassette or a reel-to-reel -reel from Dan and I got something from Frank. I could tell Dan in the summer, he was in Arizona and he brought his niece or somebody with him. I could hear her in the, they went to the local ABC affiliate where they had a mic and an engineer and they recorded. He did a great job and Frank Mundy a non-standard pronunciation of the word Monday. Monday night football, and it was all great. <laughs> then I got Al Michaels, an envelope with a cassette tape in it. I had said, say these lines and give me three readings. When you're not there to direct the session, you just hope for the best and hope they'll say 10 yards and 10 yards and 10 yards, you'll say it differently, right? So I listened to Al's tape and it was a 10 yard run. A 10-yard run, a 10-yard run, 20-yard run, 
a 20 yard run, a 20 yard run. And the whole thing was read that way. And I never discussed this. I don't know the man, but I had a feeling that for some reason he felt put upon by ABC to disturb his summer and to have him contribute in this manner. Probably wasn't getting paid for it. I don't know. So let us just say there is no Al Michaels, except for that picture you're looking at. There is no Al Michaels in this what? game at all. Now, understand the other thing is that there's so little space to record the sound in these games at this time. I think we do a whole pinball game and maybe in six seconds, 12 seconds, that was the total sample space we had. <laughs> think about that, it's crazy. It was crazy small. So two things happen. One is you don't have a lot of speech calls. The other is they're horribly compressed and you'll hear artifacts like crazy because the sample rate was turned way down on this 80 PCM compression. It's nasty. I had to reserve the space for the good performances. And Dan, who's the football player, did a great job. You'll hear it. He's very excited and he's just great. Here's an example of that compression. I'm going to play a file for you. <laughs> I don't even know what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <What was that? laughs> to be fair on some of that, I also needed a stadium crowd. At some point, I grabbed all the employees of Incredible Technology at lunchtime, right after lunch, got about 15 of them, put them in the lunchroom, and we started doing football chants and stuff. So sometimes you can understand them, sometimes you can't, but when a big crowd is chanting, the intelligibility is not that good anyhow. So that's not so bad. Uh, most of the Deerdorf and Gifford stuff, you can understand what they're saying. It's pretty good, but they are munged. It's some nasty compression. I had a brain fade and I had left out some two or three, maybe six crucial lines that the game needed, like touchdown, you know, I, I did like, that wasn't in my script. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so I said a thing back to Dan and Frank, or maybe just Dan, and he went back into a studio and sent me a bunch more stuff with feeling, and it ended up in the game. So Dan just did a great job. I was very, very pleased. And I don't blame Al Michaels, because I don't know what his situation was at the time. But it, I always thought it was ironic, because of the three, he is the professional broadcaster. And I would have thought I would have gotten the cool color stuff and things from Al, but it wasn't to be. That's my story. And it kind of makes sense though, because Al Michaels is more of the play-by-play. -play. In fact, he's the only guy who's broadcasting now and he is the play-by-play -play guy. I know. And Deerdorf was the fun, colorful, ad the behind the scenes stuff. So it kind of makes sense that you're going to get the best stuff from Dan Deerdorf because he's the most energetic sort of wild guy. The other guys are more of the state what's going on the factual play-by-play -play stuff but that's disappointing that al al who's still going on today's voice is not in there <laughs> that's disappointing well and i'm waiting for the end of this story david where you're going to tell me that al michaels called incredible technologies and was practically crying <laughs> saying why am i not in this game my feelings are hurt uh frankly i think al had moved on nothing ever came of this at the time i'm just trying to get a thing done. I'm trying to make the best pinball sound package I've done so far. And anything that's an obstacle irritated me. And so I was irritated with Al personally for years. I've never forgiven him. <laughs> and I don't think he cares. So I, Al and I don't touch in any way. Now, if Al somehow some person in his family sees this and points it out to him who knows but i doubt very much anything will come of this i feel like we're kind of underground here and everything's fine and 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 this won't get back to me i rarely say anything negative over the internet pipes because that's a bad idea but this is fact this is exactly how it came down and it's just like okay and that's the way these things work sometimes with licenses some people will cooperate. This is not their business. 
being up in the booth on Monday night is Al's business. Doing this crap in the Saturday afternoon in an ABC affair. Well, actually, he did it in his apartment on a boombox. <laughs> That's what he did. <laughs> wow, he went, putting a first class effort in there. Well, my impression of Al Michaels, if it was here, it just dropped down a notch after hearing this story. So. <laughs> I know. Sorry, Al. If you want to do it, want to try it again, I'm here. The last slide I have to share is just the second half of the flyer. Data East selling facts, not fiction, about how great the game is. I'm not going to read this. You can pause the video and read all these details if you like. And in the spirit of just moving on to the good stuff, I'm going to just let you take a quick look at that. And this is in 4K, uh, you can read good. all the detail in 4K. It's right there. It's all right there in beautiful 4K. And now it's gone. There it is. Eventually, I'm going to play the game. Not yet. I'd just like to go back, David, and talk about the music. One thing that's great about these old pinball tables that you worked on is it's non-licensed music, meaning you created this from scratch. And so I would like to know, as a composer, and I'm not sure how much of a football person you are, you can tell me, but I'm just curious how you found your inspiration to come up with these tunes in a football world and feel. Yeah. It wants to be macho and it wants to be energetic. Well, it's football, but it's also pinball. So much of the music is, and Norb will appreciate this. Okay, hit it, Norb. Here's five FM oscillators. You can treat them independently. They're all mono. You have five mono FM oscillators. Hit it, kid. That's all you got. Make music. <laughs> Basically like five tracks, right? five tracks but each track only has one mono fm sound. yeah thing. what you can make with that that definitely constrains your expression there's a whole lot of stuff you can't do and the other thing is because it's fm fm is good at some things fm still being used in dance tracks and it's all over the place it's a great synthesis technique but from the dx7 DX7 uses that synthesis technology, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a DX7. And and the 2151, the Yamaha YM2151 was the chip inside here, and it was about in $1989. It was a $28 chip, and that's what you're listening. I'm jamming numbers into a $28 chip, and everything you hear is coming out of that. Now, there are eight voices total, but I got to reserve some voices for sound effects. I can only really use about five voices for music, except for maybe the end when there's no gameplay. The trick is I'm trying to make pinball music, which is aggressive and energetic. I'm trying to make football music, which has a certain macho thing going on and a little funky. There's a little funk to this, I like to think. And then I'm trying to make a snare drum with FM. FM, it's good for toms, but it's hard to make a noise thing that you can control with FM. It's hard to make snares with FM. This is my fifth game now that I've been doing this for like ooh, two and a half years. And I finally got into the point where I make an acceptable snare. You wouldn't mistake it for a real one, but I think it functions pretty well as a snare drum. I would like to play a music track from your composition, David. You were talking about the snare, and there's another instrument you didn't mention that I want everyone to listen to. And this is going to start out with some of the voices from the game, but just give it a second. And here comes the field goal team. Christopher Walken, I don't think he's saying we need more cowbell. No. FM is good for all kinds of bells and metal sounds, and so I think it nails that. That's a perfectly acceptable cowbell, even if it's not a sample. It's good. Oh, that's really cool. I don't normally think of putting cowbell in a football theme, but you know, it's kind of working in here for me. That synth bass, I mean, that's a very familiar sounding synth bass. Is that considered one voice, David? That's one of your voices to create that synth bass? Yeah. Cowbell's one voice. Actually, this is a bed because there's other stuff that's on top of it that you would hear as part of the gameplay. But this is just basically a timer bed because it lets you know you only have so much time to accomplish this thing that you've just set up. So yeah, you gotta have the cowbell. 
I like that. I heard it right away. I thought that's really cool. I love being able to hear it like this isolated because normally in the game it gets all kind of mixed with all the sounds and sometimes it just gets drowned out. So I love being able to just take these little pieces out and really listen to it. It's cool. You can well, do and what I like about this tune is this, I made a note that it has a really cool solo lead. And I always like it when I can hear that solo. It humanizes the music. So I'm going to play that. Here's the, the lead coming in. In a second. Wait for it. <laughs> and some good bass too. Did you add the end thing that I that I sent you? Yeah. So this is a file that is the end of game. Yeah. Now, I didn't write this. We licensed this. Oh, yeah, this is the... Yeah. Yeah, I wonder why. Is that what it is? Is that the... What that thing? Yeah, yeah. And at the end of the game... We put up the words on the display so you can karaoke it, so you can sing right along <laughs> with the music. We've been doing this now for five games, and so we, we, we always did that. I gotta ask you about, you were talking about the snare. So I'm hearing, I heard a snare in the previous cut, and this one had the that very synthesized <laughs> So which was the snare oh, yeah. you're talking about? One that was like the or the That was like, more like that kind of Simmons electronic yeah, that Simmons thing. You know, FM does that pretty well too, because that really the Simmons thing was electronic, and so it wasn't that hard to mimic, right? Basically, you just take a sine wave and drive it down in pitch really fast, and the way yeah, yeah. which how high you start and how fast you do it, and if you put a little noise at the front of it, you can do that Simmons electronic thing all day. It's real easy. That's a very '80s. You don't make an '80s song just pull that in. Love yeah. that sound. Well, and here's a straight up drum track from the game. It just goes on and on like that. Those are the toms. I think that's part of the interactive queue up at the top. There's a, a hole up there underneath the ABC. Mm -hmm. And the ball goes in there. And then you have those lights behind it. And those will determine what you get. Your ball goes in the hole, it stays in the hole until the machine kicks it out. While it's there, it's randomizing. And those are yards. You're gonna get 10 yards or 20 yards or 50 yards or sacked. There's a bad outcome too. That drum sound lets the player know, oh, we're thinking about it. We're randomizing, we're gonna pick one of these. And the lights move too. You'll be able to see that when we play. It's so cool, I wanna ask you, David, in your approach because from when I do sound and, and when I'm at sound design and music, usually it's, it's linear medium. I'm working in the films, so I know exactly what's going to happen at this time and at this time. So it's all kind of woven together. It's all predicted. But of course, in the gaming world, everything's sort of triggered. So I'm curious, when you sit down at a game like this, what do you start with? When you look at this and go, OK, I think I'm going to start with some sound effects first, or I think I'll start with the voice tracks first, or I think I'll start with some music cues. How do you do you approach it the same way or is every game different? Well, the general approach is that I look at typically I'll get something that uh, is painted like this is right. And you see all the inserts, all the flashy things. If there's an insert and it's labeled, like there's a, something that says 75, something that says 50, there's a bonus hold and a lock and a 1 million. There's all those lit inserts, right? If there's an insert, that means there's a rule behind that. And that means that when you light that or hit it when lit, that means you're going to want to let the player know they did that. And so that means that's my job. So I concentrate a lot on getting all those things to be as distinctive and rewarding and communicative as possible. Sometimes there'll be speech with them, but back in this day when we had so little speech, hit the ramp shot with the one million on it, that's probably going to be a big fanfare or something. And that is this sound right here. One million. 
Yeah, that's Frank. One million, and the crowd goes wild. <laughs> um, and the thing I haven't said about this, and why Mike referred it's really near and dear to my heart, is that this is the most interactive sound package I have ever done. In 40 years, I haven't done better than this. Wow. Partially because this is the last one that I did while there was a synthesizer in the game. Mm. All the sound that you hear is being created at runtime inside the box. There's a $75 board about yay big. And there's a computer on there and a Yamaha FM chip and a sound decompressor for the voice. And that's it. I've written all kinds of stuff. They're like sequences, but they're not MIDI sequences because they're way more interactive than MIDI sequences. When something happens, so you hit a switch, you drop a target, you hit a drop target on the left or the right, or you hit those things in front of the goalposts. The game's gonna send me a number. We predetermined 26 means you've hit that football guy like this in front of the goalposts. And then I'm gonna make a sound that's appropriate to having done that. And then I'm gonna give the synthesizer instructions and we're gonna make that sound. But when I make that sound, it's going to know where it is on top of the music because I'm making the music at runtime too. And I know where every quarter note is. I know what the pitch is. I know where tempo is. I know everything about the music. I can take every sound event that happens in the game and I can synchronize it with the music. So some of the things that happen in the game are actually like drum fills or, or horn flourishes or lead guitars or whatever. And they all are guaranteed to make musical sense and yet make sense to the player in terms of, oh, you did something, did something good. It's ironic that the most musical pinball machine I've ever done was a football machine. <laughs> so are you saying that this is the last time there was a synthesizer in here from that point on after this, there's all musical samples? Is that the difference? Is that where it changed? Actually, it changes to what we have now in about 1995. Williams did what they call the DCS system, and that's when it all changed to compress the just sample playback. Since 1995, that's the way it's been. How many channels? Well, that varies per system. And how much time? Now, time is infinite. There's a gigantic 32 gigabyte thing that costs ten dollars in there that's holding more sound data than i could generate for a game so now time is infinite back in the day when they first did that in 1995 they only had six meg worth of rom and that wasn't enough but they did a great job with it it was real hard they did indiana jones with it and they actually could play the licensed music from it they didn't have enough space. The sound guys had to do all kinds of crazy tricks. Like, okay, let's see, I've played these four bars and I know I'm gonna play them again later in the tune. I'll just store the first four bars off as a file and then I'll have another file and then I'll reuse that file and then I'll use it later on again. <laughs> it was nasty. Even though we have dramatically less space because the sound data is being created on the fly by a synthesizer chip cool but better than the compression is the fact that it is so live when mike plays a little bit i don't know if the simulator can actually do all the things that the real machine can do well, i'm going right. to find out because i really haven't spent quality time with this and so we're going to find out i'll tell you how faithful it is there's a video you shared with us and i'm not going to play the video here but i'm going to put a link to it in the description it's the opening of monday night football from 1989 i believe correct no 88 the, the season before can you tell us about that video david out of the blue on facebook messenger i got a message from mike abinati and he contacted me because it was his company pinnacle productions in spokane washington that created a real pinball machine that they shot with motion controlled cameras in Spokane in 1988. Hmm. If you click through to that link, you'll see the 1988 intro for Monday Night Football. And it was a pinball metaphor. Do you remember that, Norb? How old were you, Norb? 88, come on, be honest. Hey, I'm older than many might think, because I was already, like Mike, already in college at that point. So that was my sophomore year in college. So I was yeah, you, 19, 19 years old. 
<laughs> so yeah, Monday nights. You, are you staying home on Monday nights, Norm? Are you watching football, or what are you doing on Monday nights? <laughs> oh man, I mean, you know, it's college time, so there's a lot of stuff going on. But uh, the, the Seahawks were pretty awful back at that point. So. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> so the Seahawks aren't quite what they are today. So, but yeah, that open. I had not seen that in. Uh, so you showed it, it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it takes me back. But I'd totally forgotten there was a whole pinball theme to it. It's well done. I had always thought that they did that in response to us creating the pinball machine, but it was reversed. They created that pinball machine for the opening. I don't know if ABC approached Data East or somebody who was shrewd saw Monday Night Football and said, hey, we can do that. I suspect it was the latter. So they got hooked up with ABC and had the rights to use an awful lot of the visual elements of that opening in this pinball machine. The graphic style, the colors, everything, it's very close to the, uh, the machine that was created just so they could shoot it with stop motion cameras. I thought you created the machine and then they took shots of it. It was the other way around. That's amazing. That little ramp in the middle of the uprights, the whole shot in the show kind of ends with that ball going through the uprights in there. So it's very well uh, patterned behind that spot. So many years ago, and then more than 25, 26 pinball machines ago, and this was the last pinball machine I did before I didn't do any pinball machines for a while. You have a busy life and you move on. I hadn't thought about this in a long time. And then Scott told me he's working on making a documentary about the creation of that thing. Oh, wow. And uh, so I sent him a message today because I hadn't thought about him since November when he got in contact with me last year. I'm curious to see if he may not have done it, but I hope he does. It's kickoff time, dude. It's time for Monday night. Let's go. Okay, sounds like you guys are good to go for me to do a little flipping, so I'm going to put my hands on the play field and put in a credit. I have to put in two quarters. <laughs> Look at that. Press start. That sounded like just a little bit of the Star Spangled Banner. Just a tiny bit. Yep. I didn't think Francis Scott Key would get on me. <laughs> it's only a few notes. I like that cool bass sound. Live from Chicago, welcome to Monday Night Football. And that's really Frank. The skill shot, Mike, you'll get 30 yards if you can hit the flashing 30 yards off the off the plunge. See what I can do. A 20 yard return. Out. <laughs> Okay, I locked a ball. Spinner. A 20 yard return. Got to plunge more than that. A 10 yard gain. That's pretty clear voices, actually. Well, Good. Yeah, easy to understand. Yeah. To hear the files, they're grungy, but. Oh, yeah, that's kind of the sound. That was the way it sounded back in the day. Yeah. He runs it all the way there. Through. Got it. Touchdown! Now here's the fly for the extra point. Oh, it's, it's in there. there. It's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Out. A ten-yard game. David Norb and I have this backstory where there's some basketball video game that. They played back in the day, and the announcer would always go, Ich good! Because it was such a distorted, Ich! Instead of it's, it was Ich! And this it's good is better than that. Yeah, the Sega Genesis yeah. back in the mid-early 90s. Ich good! <laughs> just the S could not handle the compression. Yeah. Good for the German market. <laughs> <laughs> ich good! Ich good! <laughs> David, where did you get the crunching, uh, grunting sound effects? Out. I probably took somebody at IT and punched him a few times recording the results. <laughs> we, we needed to get physical. Is your voice in here somewhere? 
Not in this one, I don't think. I mean, it features the crowd is all those people from IT at the time. Mm-hmm. From Incredible, it's the company that actually did the software. <laughs> Are we on ten ball play here, Mike? Absolutely. <laughs> ten ball game. It was me. It had to be an unlimited ball. Touchdown! Now here's the fly for the extra point. There's the cowbell. The middle ramp. Yeah. See, you have a finite amount of time to make this. That's the timer element, right? It's good. Yep. So the cowbell gives you that feeling like time's running out, right? Oh, yep. what a hit. Yeah, Dan. Oh, what a hit. Ouch. A 10-yard game. Oh, what a hit. Ouch. So what was the crowd telling me? Go for multi-ball? Go for bonus hole. Bonus hole. See, there's a flashing chevron on the left oh, ramp. I see it. That optimizes the points during the end of ball bonus. If if you can, if you can hit that. Do you have a favorite audio track from here? Like your favorite music cue that you just. Feels like you're a special baby out of this uh, game. The kick is up. It's good. Well, I want I want to get to the bomb if we can do it. He just scored bonus hole. There you go. He's just scored bonus hole. Okay, on the right right ramp it says he's just scored extra ball. Go for extra ball. You got it. It's good. A twenty yard return. Is that the 50-yard line? That's right. The lights are moving along the play field. It's like I'm working my way down the field. Right. Oh, yeah. I didn't even notice that. Right, right. You're trying to get down to the end zone? Oh. He's trying. <laughs> I'm trying. Vector ball. He's to the 40. See, I mean, I, yeah, if you make the, the, the skill shot, now it's 20 yards. There you go. That's a touchdown. Now here's the fly for the extra point. Now got it's it, up, it. up for the extra point. Do that quick again. Oh, it's oh, got to be fast. Nailed him. That's an important combo shot if you can do it. What happens if he gets the two in a row? Um, if you do, I forget how many it is. It's three or four of them in a row, and there are people who can do that. There you go. Then that starts the multi-ball. Oh. Couldn't do anything oh, about that's, that. That's tough. He runs it all the way back. You are nailing that wow. skill shot, Mike. You're a that, touchdown that's master. Almost uncanny. Oh. And I'm nailing the ball drain right afterwards, too. <laughs> well, you're so good. You you are. One after another. A 20 yard return. Good. Oh. good hit. Good hit. It's a good thing it's not me playing this game. I'd be hitting nothing. The shallowness of our callouts are obvious, right? I mean, you hear way too much repetition, but that's all we had. It's like you only had you know, so many seconds to do it, right? Yeah, yeah. Just... In some ways, it probably made the job easier, because if you had, like, endless amounts, you'd feel like, where do I stop, right? The fact that you can only do so many, you had to be sparing with it. Yeah, there's... There's 2,000 callouts in a game like The Hobbit. I mean, it's crazy. Right. Trying to use them is... The kick is up. It's good. Okay. Hey. I got it twice. Yeah, but that was on the field goal. Oh, it wasn't the extra point. So you had the extra point two in a row. Come on, Mike. You can do it. No pressure. Well, it's up now. The ramp special. is Special. They want you to go for special. Yeah, can you feel for can special? Can you get the ball over special. to the left? Oh, that red one. I'll try it. Oh, my gosh. No. Ah. So, it's, so it's that ramp on the right. That's the special. Yeah, when it's lit. See the, the crowd noise on the... Uh, that's, that's a very familiar sound, that crowd noise. Is that a synthesized sound as well? Uh, don't know. All 
All right, I'm going to play again. Oh, the runs all the way back. Whoa, look at that. Now you have to fly for the extra point. Now, now you want to make the extra point and then make the next rim shot. Now do it again. You got it. Yes. Yes. Now what? Well, okay. It didn't, it's like it didn't register it. That stinks. That was the biggest letdown in the history of Monday Night Football. Yeah. How did it not register that? It's very uh, simple. Well, you said some of these simulations may not trigger everything. Is that a sample an example of one? Well, and here's a reality, Norm. Sometimes real pinball machines don't even trigger what they're supposed to. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So they're simulating that? That would that would stink, Mike. Let's just say you're oh never going to get to the bomb <laughs> if, if the it doesn't bomb. register that. And the bomb is a special sound? One million points. And, oh, and the music that plays this. while you're trying to do it is... Yeah, well, I, I just in case this happened, I recorded it so Mike can play it. Yes. Oh, okay. Just you know, in case. If, if we want this show to last about five hours, I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, what that's what time lapse is for, baby. Compress five hours into five seconds. It's all right. We'll fix it in editing. A 10-yard game. All right. How many times have you heard that, Norm? Oh man, too many times. <laughs> too many times. Like I said, if it was me playing, you'd have to have a 10 hour show to get anything to work. So, David, are you saying the bomb is one of your favorite cues? Yeah, yeah, because it, it, it combines, uh, you know, uh, like, the, 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 it's an effect, really, and it combines speech. I, I don't usually combine speech with music, because it's tricky and... Oh, that's... That was new. Yeah, yeah, you just got into a new, right? two-ball, multi-ball. And ouch, those balls drained too fast. I always panic when I get into a multi-ball, but I can't, I can't focus, and then they just all disappear. That hurts. Your little kickoff sound. Yeah, that, that was for the kicking the ball down the field on the opening. Right. Oh, yeah. Thing. It's funny because, you know, I, I played in television. That was my home console of choice. And I hear so many similar sounds. There was that every time you hit the ball or throw it. The kick is up. It's good. Oh. You know, your first video game console is a predeterminator of the rest of your life, and unfortunately, I picked the Fairchild Channel F. <laughs> oh, I remember that thing. I mean, yeah, my never uncle saw had one, one of those. But, except in a picture. Fairchild. Yeah, it, it, you know, and it was sitting right next to the the Atari, but the Atari, I think, was 15 bucks more. And I liked the controller in the Fairchild, right? Because it had like a controller and, and, and it had a knob on the top that you could rotate. I remember that. Very thing. cool. Yeah. But, but I think it, it, flop, really right? had, it had stinky games and it went away. All about the games. And I could have had a VCS, you know. I could have had the Atari 2600, but no. I wanted the 2600. <laughs> Fifteen dollars, chase your fate. I remember I wanted the twenty six hundred, and then my dad ended up getting the television. I was initially d disappointed because I really wanted that twenty six hundred. But then I came to love yeah. the television as funky disc controller that nobody else could master except myself and my buddy yeah. Jim. But the crowd sound just just like that. Sadly, that like it was. A game <laughs> I am just having some major drain problems down the center. Welcome to Monday Night Football. Monday! <laughs> all the way back. 
Okay, this is it, Mike. <laughs> You're gonna make the extra point. I'm having flashbacks of laser war. Okay, now! Oh. 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 Almost had so you gotta hit it twice, that's the trick. I, mean, I watched a video of some guy play, and, and he did it like five times in a row. I was quite impressed. Wow. And that, that's where I got the recording of the, the bomb thing. So I'm not quite sure how many times you have to do it. Qualify the multi ball. It's been too long. There was a sound earlier that it sounded like you had a horn stab in there. It sounded a pretty good horn stab. I don't know what you use for that, but... He runs it all the way back. No, that's, that's synthesis. That's FM and synthesis. You know, horn stabs are, are so much about gesture and getting that, that pitch bend at the right time and down the right way. Ah, here you go! Do I still get to shoot for it? I, it's still lit? There's a chant, Bo. Ah. The crowd's going wild. They're chanting B-O-M-B. Shoot the bomb. That was cool. Now I can understand it, too. So you're saying that now that was the lead-in, but if he had actually gotten it, then it would have been an even bigger payoff at the end of it? One million points. Which I actually played earlier in the show. Yeah, but we didn't get to see it in context, so we heard it dissected, but... We're so close. Go for bonus. Go for Out. Sounds like go for volleyball. <laughs> oh, what a hit! Oh, what a hit! He's just scored extra ball. There, there, there. That's the horse staff. That's the horse staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Touchdown! Now here's the extra point. See, no matter which piece of music is playing in the background and what key that's in, that horn stab will always transpose itself to be right. Nice. I like that. So, are those drum sounds working correct off the jet bumpers? I think so. Next your ball. More pinball. Kick off again. He runs it all the way back. Touchdown. Now here's the try for the extra point. This has got a very um Harold Faltermeyer. It's good. Yeah. Simply sound fair. to it, you know? Harold Faltermeyer. I did it did twice, that. but the game the game didn't do it. Oh uh, man. Yeah, I yeah, I don't know. Maybe I don't understand the rule. All right. You did get the bomb earlier, but you did it differently, right? That wasn't from the two. No, I did. Right, I, I, I made know. it twice. I made it twice. Oh, you did? Oh, okay, well, time. I guess I missed that. He runs it all the way back. Touchdown. Now here's the time for the extra point. The kick is up. It's good. See, I did it again. Okay, yeah. I'm wrong about that, obviously, because I, I don't believe it's missing. It. David, were there any particular composers, you know, like at the time that influenced your style here? Back in 1989, you said when this was made, so anything that kind of channeled him from that? You know, back back in that day, I, I was listening to a lot of, lot of Jeff Beck, his newest stuff. And while you know I can't do uh, that kind of guitar, still that 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 hot instrumental stuff, you know, influenced me a lot. All right. So I'm in a three-ball multi-ball. Do you know so, what I should be doing in multi-ball? Yeah. Okay. I, you want to hit the UP. You want to put the goalposts up, and then you want to make goalpost shots. So how do I get the goalposts up? Uh, with the flashing UP. Oh, the UP. The Directly in front of the... Dudes. There. Yeah, see? Yeah. It goes up. There we go, my 
Mike's got a stress. It's like a surgeon. Like a surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> Game. So I still am in multi ball, but the goalpost has come back down, and UP is not. It's not lit anymore. Right, you have to do something to qualify that again, and I'm not sure what it is. It, the light, the lock lights are flashing, so I think it wants you to send balls like that. So you've locked a ball. Well, a ten yard game. That was a special multi-ball game that you were playing there, right? With the with the fat synth chords going on. Yeah. Well, the tempo is so way you, up from where we were. So if you have chords like that, where there's three three what, note yeah. chords, are those considered three different That's, voices, or are they one voice? Oh yeah, doing. That's three different, three different synth voices. So if you gotta make a chord, you're like Robin. You're, you're taking a oh, lot yeah. from your sound bank. Oh. Well, your drum track, typically what you, you know, what I can do is I can change the drum patch oh, for every play. note. So I'm alternating a bass drum with a snare drum in one track. Okay. And so that yeah, only yeah. takes one synth voice to do. So that means you got five to work with. So. <laughs> So you got the sit in, they got the bass on one, and then the chord, right? Yeah, probably the bass drops out while I'm playing the chords, but that's okay, you know, because you don't notice it, because I'm I do it very short period of time. I'm stealing, right? I'm, I'm manually yeah, yeah, yeah. stealing stuff all the time. And it seems like I have a lot more, but I don't. Yeah, it's a it's like a little bit of a sleight of hand trick to fool the fool the ears that you have more going on than there really is. Five voices is not a lot. Oh yeah. Like you say, get creative. It sounds fuller than it. Uh, See, I did it twice there again too. I got it twice. Yeah, I know. They, they, yeah, I know them. But I, ignore what I'm saying, Mike. I know nothing. Nail <laughs> them. And you've heard it here. I've said it. It's true. <laughs> or I so did know, I'm, but I'm old, so I've forgotten. So yeah. Now I'm looking at this play field. Do they have any actual teams oh, represented oh, yeah, here? Or do yeah. they could they have to stay away no. from actual team logos? I assume they had to stay oh, away yeah. from it, right? That'd be another licensing fee. This is this is really a game based on that intro. For Monday Night Football from night from the '88 oh, season, that, that's what this is. I mean, it has ABC. Yeah, yeah ABC. But the guys in that rap that's going up right now, that looks a lot like the Buffalo Bills uh, color scheme. Yeah. Or the old AFC Pro Bowl colors. Uh, it was usually red and white, versus the NFC was usually blue and white. Maybe it's possible the bomb is lit when you're within 10 yards of a... Well, no, you'd have to know, because within 10 yards, you wouldn't throw a bomb. So, even I know that. i throw a bomb from the... From, like, the other The yard line, fourth down. I don't know quite. Oh, what like a that. hit! Good hit! Good hit! What was cool about that 1988 Good open video that you hit. talked about... They actually had a Seahawk in it. Had, I think Steve Largent had a quick little cameo, so it's nice to see some Seahawks representation back in 1988. Oh, a 10-yard game. Who was the quarterback then? He's over the goal line. 1988. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, off to the internet. <laughs> no, no, I'm trying to see if I can figure it out on my own. I know it was. Ah, uh, see, 92. Was that John Freeze? Or what was, what was back? 88. Somewhere between Dave Craig and a whole slew of bad quarterbacks. I don't remember when Dave Craig played his last game. I got it. A 20 That's a trivia question. Who was quarterback in 1988? Think of it. I would say Dave Craig, don't you think? I think he might have been. I just don't remember his last year. It was, in the, it was definitely, I think, yeah, it might still have been Dave Craig. Late 80s. All right, Dave all the way back. Touchdown! Now here's the drive for the extra point. The kick is up. It's good. Oh, what a 
yeah, yeah. Well, I have two balls locked. So, yeah, you have two balls locked. Yeah, that right shot is going to be multi -ball. Oh, 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 you just need to make the bomb shot for the multi-ball release. It's flashing. Yep. The green thing is flashing. Oh, what ball are you oh, on? So this I'm done. My game is oh. over. So the, oh. the subject we set up, and it was the last one. We're, we're, oh, we're just so about figured out how to play this game, and you're on ball 10. Oh. It's like throwing an interception at the <laughs> one-yard line. That was a good. That was a good set, though. You were you were definitely making that game last forever. Ow. Well, this is a new tune. Oh yeah. Yeah, because you're putting initials oh, in. Number. This is your glorious. I'm putting my initials in. I say, for the sake of time, we call that good, and let's play that bomb music for our listeners. In isolation, sure. We'll wait till your credit music comes Unfortunately, it to doesn't end. last very long. This guy started the bomb. It plays about eight bars, and then he drains. Here it is. Right after the crap. Kick it up! It's good. There any drains. <laughs> okay, I had that going on. They were saying, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. I just didn't make the shot, but he got it. That's what that. On ball yeah. ten, just now. That see, it, it's coming back to me. For this all to happen, it's not sufficient to hit that shot twice. You have to do what it takes to qualify the lock on the left, and then the lock on the right. Then you have to put the balls on the left and the ball on the right. Then that green arrow, not on the orbit, but on the ramp shot, multi-ball release. You got to get that, and then you're there. Three-ball, multi-ball, or maybe four, I don't know. I encourage people watching to find one of these machines or play it on the computer and try to do it yourself, because it can be done. I just didn't do it today. Sad to say. I feel like I lost the game, like how Norb feels when the Seahawks lose. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, come on, man! You threw an interception at the one-yard line, man. Sad day. We'll never, never get over that. <laughs> nope, <laughs> never. Lose the whole thing. You got Marshawn Lynch. He's there. <laughs> he's not in the stands. Oh, he's he's on the it. sidelines. <laughs> don't bring me there. Don't do it, David. Don't do it. I'm, I'm taking you there. Do you have any other stories about making this game or working on it that we haven't heard that are worth sharing? Anything that you would like to just be remembered as part of this game? Well, I know collectors will be disappointed, but I haven't joined them. I am not a pinball collector. Mike is a pinball collector, but I'm not. Since I lived here in Washington, I live on a slope. We have a lot of slopes in Washington. If you look at our house from the front, it's a two-story house. If you look at our house from the back, it's four stories. <laughs> wow. So we're on a severe slope, which means there's no place on at ground level where pinball machines could live a peaceful life with my wife. That's not a possibility because it's just a kitchen and a living room and a dining room, basically. And pinball machines are not going there. So that means they have to go either up or down. And where I am right now, this is my studio. It's in a space underneath my garage, which is a separate detached building. And it's 400 square feet. And I, a few years ago, made that my pinball studio. I've just totally committed to doing nothing but pinball now. But you have to go down 18 concrete steps to get in this from street level. Mike's seen this. It's not easy to get machines down here, but at least gravity's on your side. Getting up out of here, gravity is not on your side. And so it's ugly to get machines up and down. So I can't collect. However, Data East had a thing with us as contractors that at the end, the successful end of the project, they would give us our final payment and two games. 
to this time I'd done five games. And so Monday Night Football was the game I received. I owned a Monday Night Football. Wow. Um, and it came, I moved it out here to Washington when I moved, when Microsoft moved me. And it lived in the special place in the bonus room in the house. And people played it. We'd have parties and that was fun. Eventually it moved down into storage where it languished for years. And then I felt bad about that. And so I finally had my friend Jerry find out how much it was worth. And I just said, well, I want it to go to a good home where it's going to be played. Some guy from Bellingham bought it, came down and got it. But I think Charlie of the Seattle Pinball Museum ended up with it. Is it at the Seattle Pinball Museum? I think it is. In fact, when Charlie caught wind of us doing this, he, he wondered if we would ever take this show on the road and actually tape a real machine. And I said, well, I won't speak for Mike. I think that would be very hard. <laughs> very hard. I am more than happy to do an on-location show once COVID is over. We can definitely do that. Well, the museum's closed. You know, it's a mess. Yeah. That's the only game I ever owned. And I owned it for a long time. And then I sold it. Now, I took an alien from Highway Pinball as part of my payment for doing that sound package. And so currently I own one machine. I have an alien, which is a extremely rare thing now since the company tanked and they only made 200 of them. So it's worth a lot actually, collectors want it, but they'll rip it from my dying fingers because I really like that machine. It turned out well and they're making them again. So that's a good thing. Given the nature of the work in this one and the fact that I think Playing a real one is the only way you can experience all the interactive audio. I almost wish I had it still. I would have this one and I have Alien. I suppose I'd have a family guy to make my wife happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have one final story. Get it. Norb, we have a video of this that Norb filmed. We can put a link to that. I have a mini virtual pinball machine in my collection that can play these games where you actually stand up and play. And I downloaded this football table, and I'm pretty positive it's Monday Night Football. But someone had taken the pinball game and put Norb's music and voice callouts from one of his videos in it. And I had Norb over to the house, and I said, Norb, you got to play this. And Norb went live, oh, yeah. and he played it. And this person didn't know Norb. He just used stuff from his YouTube content and made it all the voice stuff. And so, Norb, I know you've got that video on your channel, so I will put a link to that in the description. Do you remember now? I forgot all about that. Yeah, I have to dig back in the old library to, to, to find that one. But yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I remember thinking, wow, who actually took the time to do this with, with my funny. stuff and put it on here? But I, I felt very honored. It was like, wow, somebody ripped my stuff and put it on here. That's kind of cool to be pirated <laughs> yeah. in that way. It felt good to be pirated. <laughs> that was cool. It's an honor to be ripped like that. It's awesome. I always, at the end of my show, put a link to a game to take the fun and continue with David and I. So David, I'm going to toss to you, of all the shows we've done, what show would you like people to journey with us to, to keep this going? Well, we've got Torpedo Alley, Time Machine, Family Guy, Pirates of the Caribbean, and Laser War. Oh. Okay. For you, Mike, I think they absolutely have to go back and watch Laser War. <laughs> and this show is not out yet, but it will be out by the time you're watching this. And I have already entitled it. David has not heard the title, but the title of the show is A Very Brutal Laser War. And I'm going to put a link to it <laughs> right up there. And if you go over there with David and I, you will find out why it is so brutal. And that's all I have to say about that. Norb, thank you for joining us. I hope it was fun for you. I know you're not a pinball guy, but I really appreciate you spending time with us and talking about a pinball machine. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a pinball guy and I don't, I'm like David, I don't collect them either, but I like to play them when I have the opportunity to come across one. I'm not very good at it, but I find it fascinating just all the little components, especially getting to hear all the stories behind what goes to the sounds and the music of putting one together. I'd have no idea what would have gone behind this. And it's cool to hear your stories, not only of how you programmed it, but also dealing with the cast, the all-star cast of Monday Night Football. Now, Al Michaels did not step up to the plate and deliver when it came time. I'm very disappointed in that part of it, but that's what's fun about it. I love hearing these stories, man. Things you would never know otherwise. 
Well, thank you very much, Norm. We really appreciate your contribution. You're that X factor that we need. If you want to come back and join us, love to have you back. I so. definitely will. I, I, there'll be more definitely videos that we'll do together. But yeah, I'd love to, to hear more of David's work. It's pretty cool, especially from a sound and music standpoint, because you say some things and I'm like, ooh, you're talking about FM synthesis. Well, I messed around with a little LA synthesis in the Roland years, a few years after that. And so I love all this tech talk. It's a little different now. We don't really deal with this type of stuff anymore with all the high tech things that are at our disposal. But hearing what you had to work with, it's pretty awesome how you had to squeeze all this sound out of this teeny little package. It's, I love it. It's so efficient, yet fun and brings you back to the old days of these sounds and lights and stuff from the 80s. The glorious 80s. Can't get enough of it. All the sounds that you heard, that all that synthesis and the synthesizer and the sequencer and the synth controller, all the tables, everything, that all lived in 8,000 bytes of memory. That is crazy. Isn't that barely like the size of an email? <laughs> it has more memory than that these days. But back in the day, transistors were this big. This big. I can get one. There you go. This big. That's how big they were. And they're very expensive. They're like cantaloupes. Very expensive. So having 8,000 of them to hold your stuff was very dear. Very expensive. Well, thank you to all of you that spent this long hour with us, and we'll see you over for a very brutal laser war. Laser war! Laser war!